Hello, brothers and sisters. My name is Christina, and I'm going to share a dream that the Lord gave me on November 14, 2022. And in this dream, it starts out with me. I am kneeling in the middle of an earthquake. I'm kneeling with my hands folded like this and leaning forward. And I'm just looking around and just, just kneeling in prayer and praying with all of this shaking going on. And the earth is shaking very, very, I don't even know how to describe it, just very hard, just shake, shake, shake. And, and it feels like a whole world is shaking. It's just so hard, it's a violent shaking. Just in the buildings are, 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 are breaking apart and falling and you see a piece of a corner of a building here flying around and a big old chunk of brick over here and flying around just falling and falling and falling like everything's crumbling and I'm on, on my knees and like this and just just praying and, and seeing the destruction and then I see a man standing a little bit away from me and in, in, in front of me and he's standing and he's trying to stand up in this earthquake in this violent earthquake and he's like and he's being jerked and, and moved around in ways that I didn't think your body could move without breaking apart it was just so, so hard, the shaking. And I'm like, come here, come here, come bow down, come kneel with me and we pray, we'll pray. And he's like, no, I got this, I got this. That's all he will say is, I got this. And uh, he just wanted to make it on his own. He didn't want any help. And I'm like, oh, come here, just come with me and pray. And he didn't want to. And so he's standing there and I just, I'm just looking at him like horrified because he, the way he's, his body's both shaking and moving. It's like if you grabbed a rag doll and you went like this and its head and its arms and its legs would be going every which way. That's why, how he was going. And I'm like, how is he even standing? Like how is his bones not broken? The way he was being jerked around or shaken. And then, uh, and there's paper flying around like office paperwork like office from the office office paperwork's flying around i mean just all over the place and and uh, just everything's just shaking and then all of a sudden from that shaking he's all of a sudden in the air like the air grabbed him and flipped him upside down and he's laying on his back and he's now he's being shaken even more like if, if something grabbed him and started doing this with him like really hard and I'm like even more hor horrified because he's moving so fast and so hard that he's almost a blur. Like he's like a little rounded blur that he's just being jerked around in. And I'm like, you know, and so I see the paperwork and I see, uh, and now he's being shaken in the air. And now I see like a swirling in the air. And it goes from that and then I, there's paper again, still paper flying all around and, and you know falling all around and uh, a bank's like a bank statement. Um, you know, it has like a, a title and then it has like the lines and the columns and stuff like that. So I, I, I see it enough to know it's a bank statement, but I don't see it clearly enough to like know which bank it is. I just see kind of like a, like a red writing at the top and the rest is black and white uh, typing. So. And um, so anyway, the part I saw of it. And so I see that float for just almost like a, a, a millisecond. It's almost like it's in slow motion where I can zero in on it, see it, and then it goes. And so it falls and then he's gone. And now the shaking has gone, like from the shaking is now gone, but now it's a, a whirlwind, like a, a tornado, like I'm in the tornado. And again, I'm still kneeling down. I'm still on my knees. I'm still praying and I'm, you know, I'm, and I'm still looking up and I see it and I'm praying and I'm looking up and I see it and I'm praying. And, um, and then in this, while I'm doing that and I'm thinking to myself, well, I, I guess I'm going to die, but that's okay. Cause then I'll go home to Jesus. I wasn't afraid. You know, I saw what was going on. I knew it was going to happen. I wasn't sad about it, mad about it, angry about it. I was just like, okay. And so, um, 
and so that's what I was thinking in my head. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to die, and then I'm going to go home with Jesus. And and then I hear my child, like an audible voice, like if I were awake, I would have heard it, like that kind of audible. It was like, and I don't know if you've ever been spoken to by the Lord. Some of you may have. Some of you probably receive dreams and visions also and visits. And but he has such a solid, soothing, strong voice. But anyway, so immediately I was like, yeah. I was like, you know, like I was still kneeling. I was still in, like holding my hands in prayer. But I was like, now my back was straightened up. And I was looking up. And in my head I was thinking, yes, Lord. You know. And, and he says, this is not for you. And it was like really calm. And um, like this, this, the tornado and stuff was still going on around me. But I knew if, if I were to get up and walk, I would stay still in that calm section. It was like a, the eye of the storm, the eye of the tornado. Anyway, so I, would, I knew if I got up and just walked wherever I would walk, I would be in that calm section because this was not for me. I was like, and that's where the, the dream ended was when he said that. And I was like, <laughs> sorry, I get very joyful when I speak to the Lord. <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> okay. Uh, joy of the Lord is a very good thing. And so, but that was the end of the dream. And so I knew that this next thing next thing to happen this next next shaking that's going to happen in the world is for the non-believers for those who are fighting against the christians for those who are lost you know, went away from the lord so all the ones that are not in jesus christ right now this next shaking is for them and it's going to be bad like it was so bad it was like i i i've had dreams i've i've had end time dreams before and i've seen some of the destruction as it happens you know the fire the the buildings falling broken just destruction everywhere but it's always been almost like the the after part of it like it happened and this is look this is the destruction but this was as the destruction was going on like in the destruction of, of the process. And it was like really, really violent. It was really very, you know, the shaking was so hard. It was like bone crushing shaking. The, the tornadoes just was breathtaking, would take your breath away just. And so this next shaking, I believe is for them. It's not for us. Uh, we've been going through our shaking, which the Lord reminded me of, uh, of the vision that he showed me of him. He was in the heavens, in the universe, seated on his throne. At his feet was the earth. And he reached and and he reached through the earth, like his hand went through the earth, and he grabbed the wheat and he shook it. And he was separating the wheat and he shook it. And that was the dream that he gave me. And I'm like, oh. And so he was shaking us. He was shaking the believers. And at the time, I didn't know that. Like, I didn't know what we were going to go through. And, you know, and it was the whole world. Like, it, he showed me the world. And he reached through the world and grabbed all his people, which were wheat. It was wheat in his hand. And he shook it. And... So we did, we did the whole earth. I didn't know how it was going to happen, but it, it did. And um, he also showed me the separation of the church, which again, at the time I didn't understand, like how would that happen? And then COVID happened and shut the whole world down and the church, like the churches, you know, down. And I, and I could see now how the separation of the people in the church, which in the dream he showed me the church building with the doors locked. He showed me the people, the parishioners, outside the church standing there, like standing at the church. 
and then he showed me the higher up in the church like they were wearing the robes and you know and and one of them had the the, the head covering things and they were walking away from the church like and the people like here are the people and here's the church and the leaders in the church were walking away from the locked doors and next to them came up a big a sign and it said 666 six, six. so i knew it was the devil the separation that was going to happen was this was going to be from, at the time i was like what he's leading our the devil's leading our leaders away i wasn't sure <laughs> i knew there was going to be some kind of separation i knew who the lord was going to be revealing you know uh, um, things to us but i did not know like the whole earth literally was shutting down kind of a thing so anyway that was one of the dreams I think I, I remember I did a video on that but again I didn't understand completely at the time of that video what it truly truly meant until after we went through it I'm like the Lord is so good to like how we can't comprehend he he knows already and sees it so he just prepares us for it so anyway that was a great shaking for us this next shaking is for the non-believers um, and he was also letting us know, or let me know through, uh, reminding me that, um, the vision that he showed me of the people falling into the pit and there were younger people, you know, late teens, uh, twenties, thirties falling into that pit. Um, I was shown in, and they were just falling like rain into the pit. I tried to catch them, but I couldn't catch them. You know, I was like crying and screaming, like, save them, save them, help them. You know, I, and I couldn't, I couldn't catch them. They were just falling like rain into the pit. And, and I see, and finally, when I look down, I see these people like screaming, like for help. And, and you can tell they're like, though I couldn't hear them, I knew the cries that they were crying. I knew they were crying in pain and anger and, in hurt and anguish and terror and you know all of these things that they were feeling in like despair hopelessness they were screaming and crying and trying for help but they couldn't be helped they were in the pit and at that time the lord had told me that many were being led there at that time he said they're being led there into the pit and few, if any, would get out, would make it back alive is actually what it was, would make it out alive. And again, I, I didn't see it at the time. And so we had, we had raised them and, and he made me see that I was part of the one that led them that way. Like I was part of that. And believe me, I've asked for forgiveness for that because I was like, I, I didn't know. We were, you know, we all grow and we were like, we did that. You know, you don't know until you, the Lord opens your eyes to it. And then you're like, I did that. Like, I was a part of leading them to there because of my not wanting to follow the Lord or denying or whatever it is I was living through on my own away from the Lord. And so he, he opened my eyes to that. It's like, cause so we can't really say, oh, that generation or that generation, because guess what? Who raised that generation that's doing that? We did. And so when we are trying to save these younger, this younger generation and or other people, maybe there are generation, we're trying to save them. We never we need to remember to be humble because we were part, we are part of that problem that caused, or part of the system that caused that problem. And so we have to remember that and remain humble because we partially led to that. And so we need to remember that ourselves. Um, and so stay humble, stay loving, stay caring, stay, stay sympathetic um, and, and show them love and forgiveness and kindness in the joy of the Lord, um, share the word with them, say, share Jesus Christ, help to bring them to the Lord because that's their only hope. And, and that great shaking, it was so violent because they had no hope. 
our shaking didn't look as violent, though it was it's a it was a harsh shaking. We had the Lord as our hope. Like when we have problems, who do we go to? Jesus. <laughs> Lord, I need help. You know, it's just I'm having trouble with this. You know, you know how many times he answers you every day. He answers you. Like he if he wakes you up, he's answered a prayer for you. Because you still have something to do on earth today. And so this is our our way not to make up because there's nothing we can do to make up for what we've done but we can help them come to the Lord and know of his love and kindness and forgiveness and, and joy and in the you know life you know life just show show them the Lord's light and um so that's this is going to be our opportunity to do that because they're shaking they're going to go through they're not going to want to accept it they're just not and it's going to cause more destruction because they're going to fight against the correction like the lord is only doing this to try and wake them up you know he's shaking us he tries to wake us up either we're going to grow and get strengthened him or we're going to grow and separate from him hopefully we've grown and grown closer to him armored up a little bit better <laughs> you know because you know everything that we've been going through hopefully you, you've been you've been getting strength and, and strengthening from the Lord and so um, we need to be able to draw them to the Lord with kindness with love with mercy with grace with forgiveness and and showing them the love of the Lord and so that's what we want to do and uh, let me see, what was the other one? Okay. And anyway, so the Lord's been revealing a, a lot of stuff like that. And, and so the first shakings were for us, the believers. This next shaking is going to be for the unbelievers. I do not know the timeline, but I know it's the next season. What that means is I don't know the Lord's timing. <laughs> <laughs> but the next shakings to come a lot of the the main dreams that he's given me that's come true usually when that happened within a two to three year span but i'm not putting a date on it because it could be 10 years i don't know i don't know the lord's timing but um for a bunch of the ones that he's shown me that's happened recently it's been you know two to three years sometimes even less um uh, less timing than that and so be ready be ready to draw people to the Lord with love kindness forgiveness um, just uh, living your life the way you're supposed to in truth in righteousness and um, cling into the Lord uh, speak to him daily pray to him if you're not sure what to pray, ask him, Hey, Lord, what, can you show me who I need to pray to? Am I praying right? Is this right words? Or, you know, clear my heart. You know, what is in my heart that I need to clear out that's not supposed to be there? You know, just speak to him daily and, and, and talk to him. And become close to him. He is, he is a loving father. He, is, he loves us so much, and he wants us to talk to him. He wants us to ask questions. He wants us to ask for direction uh, on how to act or what to say or what to do, um, how to manage, um, how to live our life. So for everything, everything, and everything, give thanks and pray always. <laughs> and um, so... Anyway, so this next this next season is going to be a rough, tough shaking up of the unbelievers, and but we as Christians need to mind our tone. That was a big one that he's just recently revealed to me to mind our tone, because we can say one thing, but our tone says the complete opposite. So, minding your tone of voice. Your tone will reveal your heart. So you can say, yeah, I forgive you. <laughs> Does that sound convincing? Convincing? No. So make sure that you're watching your tone. You're minding your tone of voice because that's revealing your heart. You know, 
if if you truly are loving on someone, if you truly are forgiving in someone, or you are truly a kind person, or truly living with the Lord or for the Lord. Um, so, mind your tone. Um, bring people to the Lord. People to the Lord. And um, if you're not sure how to do it, what to do, uh, pray to the Lord. Uh, ask your pastor. Ask people at your church. Hey, you know, I want to try to start, you know, calling people in to, to the Lord. Maybe come to church with me. How do I start that? What do I do? What do I say? Do we have resources that I can hand out? You know, things like that. Um, just bring it to your church notice that that's something that you want to do and maybe they can direct you. Oh, yeah, we have this going on where we get together as a group and do this so, or that. So ask, you know. Ask around with uh, people you go to church with or, or the, you know, your pastor, your preacher, whichever. All right. So that's what I wanted to share with you. And I think that is it. I'm going to do another video here in a little bit. Um, I don't want to get into that one. Okay. All right. So that's it for now. Uh, you have a great night. Um. Uh, May your night be peaceful and restful in the Lord. And Jesus loves you. I love you. Good night.